What is up guys, Jay here from MJ Tech. Today coming with another iDoing head unit. This one is for a Nissan Sentra of 2013. This tutorial should work for any Nissan Sentra from 2012 all the way up to 2017. This iDoing radio went a little bit above and beyond of my expectations. Uh, typically with these we get a quad core processor and only a few have come with an octa-core processor but this octa-core processor in particular for this unit is an octa-core snapdragon processor you know those are typically high-end not only that guys but now we have eight gigabytes of internal ram and 128 gigabytes of internal storage i don't see how you will need that but now we know that this radio can multitask and potentially uh, play uh, video games so it comes also equipped with bluetooth 5.0 it has a 10.2 inch display it is a double den unit, but it is thin, so that means that it doesn't stick out to the back. Uh, you can uh, upgrade the memory up to 256. The display, like I said, is a 10.2, but it is a QLED panel with 1280 by 720 resolution. The GPU is the Adreno 610, and it does have 4 times 45 watt maximum, so that's what, about 180 watts approximately. And yes, guys, we know that iDoing has been around for a while. I've been reviewing the radios also for a while. And you guys might not believe me, but all of the head units that I have installed to family members and friends, they all work. Not even one of them has broken down yet. So with this being said, let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside and see what we get typically you get here some foam uh, protecting quite nicely the entire head unit and this is everything we get from cables uh, also I forgot to mention that this one does have the 4G modem so you can hook up a SIM card and have service here at all times it does support wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as well so here we have some more of the harnesses this appears to be like the antenna harness for FM and AM that's what I would assume based on what I'm seeing here you also get here another plug so maybe this vehicle has uh, several different models where uh, or trims where the connection changes for the FM radio and that's probably what that is and this is the head unit right here guys as we know these are plug and play so there's no need for cutting, no need for customization, no need for none of that. You simply disassemble your current head unit and then you pop this in there and that's typically what we have to do. Now in this case, it looks like the vents and possibly the hazard uh, buttons, uh, they had to be transferred over. But yes guys, this is the, definitely the uh, trim for the Nissan Sentra from 2012 all the way up to 2017. Again, we have a QLED panel. Over here we have the power key, the home key, the back key, the volume rockers with the microphone. But it does come with a microphone as well. I am not sure if this one was advertised to come with a reverse camera, but we can take a quick look here add the wires and see if in fact we have a reverse camera and to be quite honest with you guys i don't see yet here the reverse camera i see the 4g modems i don't think that we got the reverse camera we have the microphone right there and uh, the main harness but no guys we do not have unfortunately the um the rear camera so with that being said guys let's go ahead and run here to the Nissan Sentra get it ready install it and of course we will review it at the same time see you there well guys this is the famous Nissan Sentra this is the 2013 and uh, this video should be able to work for any 2013 all the way up to 2019 the car is in pretty good shape it is a co-worker's car uh, this is his daughter's car specifically and we will hook up a reverse camera however guys this is so common with pretty much any sedan out there that i won't be providing the details on how to run the wires we know the drill typically you remove this uh, cover 
from underneath the trunk with a few clips and then you simply run the wires in this case the reverse wire is on this side so we had to open this up see which one it is uh, splice it get it all together run the wire through here that way when the car goes into reverse the camera gets activated and then after that we run that wire all the way through the uh, pillars and plastics and whatnot until we get to the front dashboard guys it is that simple uh, no brainer whatsoever so getting a look here inside of the vehicle it is uh it, it is not my car obviously so uh, excuse the mess here here we have the dashboard guys so this car is super simple it works in our favor in terms of uh, taking it apart so all we have to really do is just with the pry opening tool we had to gently pry open here the mid section and the radio won't come off but this whole plastic around it will and then that's when we will encounter some screws inside uh, you will need a phillips screwdriver in my case i have an electric one but you can use a manual one it's fine and uh, the pry opening tool so we have to remove this upper vent area because our new radio comes with that piece as well we had to transfer these uh, these vents and the middle buttons as well so hopefully uh, it fits I see a little bit of a difference here between the airbag button and the hazard button here there might be a little bit of a difference guys but I'm not sure yet let's take a look at it and yeah it seems like it's a little bit different but uh, let's just move along and see how it goes okay the pry opening tools came included which is nice so i believe all you have to do is go underneath it like so and then you should just start prying it and then just pry it nicely like so and voila guys the first section is out very cool and so yes we do have indeed four uh phillips screws and you might need an extension because they are quite deep in and you also might need a magnet as well now that we remove those four phillips screws there's like a little hook you guys have to kind of like lift the radio like so and then pull it out now we simply undo a couple of harnesses from the back it seems like a simple radio and i do notice here that the fm antenna it's a little bit different they did include an adapter for this as a matter of fact it is right here we can start off by putting this on guys so this is antenna auto and apparently we have to connect this as well but uh yes this is how it clips on here it goes in like this and boom okay now we have to connect this somewhere into the harness and then this goes into the new radio and yes we do have the two harnesses one is for i think this is steering wheel controls and then the main harness here for power and speakers unfortunately guys we have to take that extra step of removing this section of the vent so for this we have two more phillips screws so after removing those phillips screws you simply pull it out disconnect here your hazard button switch it's very well put on there guys keep in mind that these uh, pieces they get a little toasted with the heat of the sun of course and weather conditions and so you have to be careful when taking them out and voila so in order to remove these vents out of this vessel area that we just removed uh, all we really have to do is undo the clips and then you have to kind of like pull towards the back as you are removing the clips that way they don't go back in like so and just keep doing this all around it will require but right here it is coming off right now guys there we go we just got the this is the left one looking at it here from the front we got this one removed and now we will do the right side on this vessel we have these little fillers that need to come off for the vents i'm assuming there's uh, some trims out there that maybe don't carry that but with this vehicle you have to take them off and they're just held by two clips and they spit right out i can see them on the floor but anyways you have to open these two in order to install the vents back on here 
Well guys, this is the final outcome on this camera. I like this style of camera because it looks more like a OEM type of camera instead of getting the ones that connect here to the uh, license plate. And so we ran the wire here. This car, the 2013 specifically, goes here on the driver's side. And then we connected it in here in which uh, it's hard to see now because I covered the panel already. But you're gonna have a main harness that goes to the tail light and the positive is the green with black and then the ground is the one with uh, completely black. So just keep that in mind to connect the positive and the negative. And then there's a trigger wire in here in which you have to connect it to the positive. That's the yellow trigger wire. It has to be attached. I don't know why they don't do that from factory, but it has to be attached to the positive and we got the camera working. This camera, I like it because it is adjustable. So even after you install it, if you loosen up this little Allen uh, screw on the side, you can move it up and down until you get the proper adjustment, guys. So of course, we ran the wire here all around the uh, pillars, and then we came here to the uh, driver's side, as I said. We went underneath the speedometer and fished it right out here guys so this is the trigger wire this is the one that i'm mentioning that on the opposite side you're going to have something very similar this goes to the uh, positive and then this will get connected into the radio now with this harness you're going to have this uh, pink wire that says back this gets connected here together with the trigger wire okay it goes on like this so this you can use any type of connector uh, of your preference these two go together and then you have this harness uh, that came also included with the radio this is for your backup camera and it says back video in then you connect the video of the rear camera in here and that's all you have to do when it comes to the reverse camera now the next thing that we're going to do here guys is go ahead and connect the antennas here for the 4g modem the antenna for the GPS, those typically get installed on the upper side of the dashboard. Then we have, of course, the USB ports. Now the USB ports, I ordered the little socket that you guys have seen before. It's like the little USB converts this 12 volt socket into the USB sockets. That way they can get wire card play and have it in here instead of having these wires dangling around. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is pretty straightforward, super simple installation. Like I said, we're gonna do the antennas now in which they get connected back here. And uh, yes, it works already. So let me get the reverse camera hooked up and the antennas, and then I'll be right back with you guys. Well, guys, your final connections should look something like this. As I said before, we have the main harness here. Then we have the antenna uh, harness. This is the converter and then it gets connected in here. This all comes in the same harness dedicated for the Nissans from 2013 to 2019. And this is your trigger wire. We just uh, connected these uh, self soldering uh, connectors in which all you have to do is apply heat to them. I love them. Then we have here the reverse camera connection. For this, you have to connect this little single harness with the pink wire, but do not use this pink wire from here as your uh, back wire you have to use this one instead leave this one alone then we have now the gps antenna which is on the upper side of the dashboard as well as the 4g modem antenna as well and then we get the microphone which is this right here i ran the microphone so just uh, fish the wire through and then connect it to the harness which also has this very important um piece which is the sim card tray so this is all connected into this big harness which gets connected on the middle side and then in here you can fit your uh, sim card for 4g service guys now it uses a micro uh, sim card so just keep that in mind you might need an adapter as most sim cards nowadays are nano size now check something interesting about this radio is that it comes with hdmi port a full hdmi port and an optical audio out that's for more connections and other things that you might want to do with this radio, which is really cool. And now all we have to do, guys, is uh, here for the USB. This is the data USB, and it says it right there. It says USB 1 mirror phone, and this is the one that gives you wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto. So this one is where we're going to connect it to the socket, which is on the way from Amazon. The socket that will go in here with little USB port. That's where this will connect to. And so that way this wire is not dangling around. Tomorrow. 
Well guys, awesome news. Another day has passed and we got here the little socket for this 12 volt socket. We're gonna be removing this and adding this particular one. What I like about this one is that it is only a foot long. Uh, some of them come with uh, at least three foot, but I was able to find this one. So that's very, very cool. And uh, basically we will connect these two together like so, and that's it. And so all you have to do now is remove this section here, the AC controls. To do so, guys, you have two Torx screws. It is a T15, so Torx number 15. Now all you have to do here is simply disconnect that same uh, 12 volt outlet. Let's see here how we can do this. There we go and check this out super simple guys now all we need to do i think i just dropped a, a coin so all we need to do now is uh remove these two little tabs it's hard to see from here uh, but first of all we had to take out this uh socket we might have to cut it with the dremel tool so let me get to this guys and i'll be right back the best method to do this is if, uh, if you grab a flat screwdriver and you press in on those little tabs and start pulling it or pushing it out as you do so, it makes it so much easier. Some of those tabs like to get back on here. So it is just a matter of patience. There we go. And the whole thing just came out guys. Now for the new one, it is a no brainer. Simply slide it through, remove the plastic nut. You might have to use the smaller plastic nut, which is also included. And by smaller, I mean that it doesn't have this flat area. As you can see, it kind of like sticks out a little bit. So this one should do the job just fine. And now we insert it in here, like so. And the cool part, guys, is that with me, I always provide the links for all of this stuff. And apparently, this is a tight fit in here, so maybe we can just screw it on by turning it. This is the final outcome on the Nissan Sentra 2013. It is a big upgrade from what we had here before. Again, we get now a massive 10.2 inch display with a 720p resolution QLED panel. It looks amazing. It comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, guys. So now when you have internet available, whether it is via Wi-Fi or the 4G modem that we have hooked up into the radio, well, you can download plenty of stuff in here, store it, and then just save it for those trips where you don't have internet connection unless you have the 4G connection, guys, and everything is working just fabulous. Check out here, again, the reverse camera. It is working fantastic, no issues whatsoever. And also, we got the steering wheel controls working, as you guys can tell, so we got the volume. Then we have here the uh, source button, okay? It gives you a whole bunch of sources and uh, so right here we have in case you guys had like a, a flash drive or some sort of memory connected to it uh, we have external video and so on and so forth guys so again a very nice unit here especially for the price uh, it comes with wired uh, carplay and wired android auto you can also use it wirelessly so right here we have gotten rid of that 12 volt socket and we added our own 5 volt a USB socket that connects directly into the radio. All of these links have been left down below for your convenience, guys. And uh, yes, we get the Play Store. I haven't added my account on here just because this is not my own car, but we do have a Play Store. We get things here like YouTube. And once again, if you guys are connected to the internet, you can see how fast it loads. I mean, this thing is just crazy fast. Let's go ahead and play this real quick. And you guys can see right here that again, it does work fantastic so let's go ahead and skip this and there we go guys you have of course a full screen as well okay and again it is just a very smooth unit all the way around we have the capacitor buttons here on the left side along with an integrated microphone but we have decided to install the one included by iDoing the only thing not included on here was the reverse camera and the socket just so that you guys know but everything else is already included here with this unit so let's see what else we have on here we have settings and on settings guys when you hook up the reverse camera 
you have to ensure that you select the correct reversing camera system. In this case, my reverse camera was not working until I read the manuals, and that's because this is a CVBSN type of camera, and so you have to select it accordingly uh, or according to whatever the specs are for that particular camera, and now everything is working great. So we have here a system where you can hook up uh, you know, uh, many different settings. Very cool little unit. I don't have any complaints whatsoever. If you guys want to enter the factory settings, you have to press the number eight four times, press OK. And now you can enter uh, into more. Uh, I would say these are more like you know deep into the system type of settings. I will leave them alone to be honest with you guys. I would not touch them. And as I said before, if you guys want to set up uh, the, uh, the buttons here from the steering wheel, you have to go into common, you go all the way down to where it says keys and learning. And then this is how you enter uh, this particular uh, setting in order to get the keys to work the way you want to. And uh, here, let's go now into the CarPlay side of it. I have it wired right now, but like I said, you can do it wirelessly as well by connecting to the Bluetooth. The capacitive buttons, I wish that they were in the bottom. It makes it, uh, it will make it you know, a lot easier to navigate the system because this piece right here is kind of like on the way, especially when you're sitting here. Uh, so for video, it came with a default video, okay? All right, guys, and of course, our next uh, test here will be the FM radio. So this is uh, a Spanish radio station right here. You can increase the volume. And it sounds just fine. Let's do the same thing here for uh, an English radio station. Of course, you can search for stations. Let's search for another one. The reception is not bad, but you just have to find the proper one. There we go, guys. So I think that now with this being completed here, which is the unboxing, the assembly, and the review of this unit. We have now completed the video here, guys. Let me know down below what you think about the I Do and Head unit. Keep in mind that I will leave the links down below for your convenience as well. And just comment below and uh, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next one.